Dragoons, and we've got a brand new board game for you guys called One Night Own Werewolf. Are you a villager? Are you a werewolf? Will a villager oust a werewolf? Will a werewolf kill the villager before they can? Find out in our how to play video. So this game is basically a, primarily a bluffing game and these are the different various roles you have. Note numbers on the tokens. This will come in play later on during the night round which we'll claim in a few minutes um there are a lot more roles than the ones currently in play i will go through them all at the end of the video so these are the ones we're playing with today on the first setup for your how to play guide and we're going for three villagers a troublemaker a robber a seer and two werewolves for a five player game so for the villagers to win, they have to oust a player that is a werewolf. And for the werewolves to win, they have to not be ousted, so not be discovered, and kill one or more of the villagers. So this results in two scenarios where the villagers can win. So the village team, they can win if at least one werewolf dies. Even if one or more players also dies, as long as one werewolf has been ousted, the village team wins. It's possible for no players to be a werewolf, um, which we'll come to in the setup in a few seconds. If this is the case, as long as no one has been killed and all the players correctly identify that the werewolves are not players, the village team wins. So the werewolves win if at least one of the players dies and both the werewolves are not ousted. So there is a special character who has his own goals called the Tanner um, and he hates his job so much that he wants to be mistaken as a werewolf and be voted to die by the village. Um, in this case if the Tanner dies and no werewolves die the werewolves do not win. This means that if the Tanner is in play the werewolves can't be ousted and also have to make sure that the tanner does not die. If the tanner dies and the werewolf dies, the village team wins. So it adds a bit of complication if tanner's in play, where the werewolves not only have to make sure they kill one villager, they also have to, have to make sure that the tanner um, is also not voted to die. Right, so we'll just go to the setup. So join me in a few seconds and we'll just go through the setup of the game. So there is a really helpful companion app which explains each of the roles. Um, it's called One Night Ultimate Werewolf mm -hmm. and it's available on the iOS and Google Play Store. Um, for first time players, we highly recommend using the app which I will put a little display on the screen for you guys now. So welcome to setup of One Night on Werewolf. So we're playing five players today. So we've shuffled the cards, dealt five and they're all an extra free for the center. I've included these tokens for the viewers so they know what each card is um, and have a bit of a better understanding of the rules. Normally the players don't have any of these tokens to the third phase of the game and they would not know who each other is. So during the day phase, each player looks at their own card sneakily, works out what role they are. So this player knows he's the werewolf and now he knows he has to oust or convince the others to kill a villager, even though he does not know who a villager is at this moment in time. They move on to the night phase. So this is when the numbers in the token come into play. So this is the order in which the roles and their abilities perform. This is dictated in the rule book, um, and this is the this is called out by a GM or announcer. 
and they're the only person that can look at or oh, open their eyes during the night phase only to look at the order. But we do recommend using the app because this will read it out for you anyway and that just negates the need for an announcer. So it's a little bit safer for anyone being sneaky and cheating. So in this game, in this setup, the werewolves go first. So the werewolves open their eyes and they look for each other. So the two players know that they're the werewolves, then they close their eyes again. So this here doesn't trust this player, so he's going to check the card. Oh, it's a troublemaker. So this player knows that this player is a troublemaker currently. Unfortunately, the robber goes next. And the robber may quietly exchange his card for another player's card. And he's allowed to look at it. So he's going to choose this card. He's going to swap it with the seer. Then he checks it quickly. He knows now that this player is the troublemaker. While this player thinks he's still the seer. And this player still thinks he's a troublemaker. Then in this setup, the troublemaker goes next. And the troublemaker um, opens their eyes. And they might quietly exchange the cards of two other players, providing they do not look at the cards. So they're going to move these two, not knowing that they're both werewolves. So these players still think they're the werewolves and are still correct. This player, this is where these tokens come in for the players. This player thinks they're the seer and this player thinks they're the troublemaker. But reality, their roles have swapped. And in order to win, you must complete your current role. Um, so for the purpose of this game, the, the seer is still a villager, the troublemaker is still a villager. So they've still just got to find out who the werewolves are, which haven't really switched places. So everyone wakes up um, with an optional rule to shuffle the cards before to negate the noises. So no one can listen to see where they've moved. And then you're allowed a five minute discussion. So the aim of the game from now in this discussion is to work out what card you currently are, whether you're the werewolf or villager, and to complete your goal of the card. So in this case, the villagers have to try and find the werewolves and the werewolves have to make sure that one of the villagers is voted and neither of, neither of them are voted out. So you've got five minutes to do this. You can change the time to be longer or shorter, depending on your game group and how often you played. Because the nature of the game is probably best for the villagers and the werewolves to both lie. So the werewolves don't want to be ousted by um, the rule of elimination. So the werewolf player might say first, well, I'm the seer. I look at this player and he's the werewolf. In which case that player will obviously deny and leads to a discussion. Of course, you only have five minutes to have this discussion. So depending on how, how well you can lie and how you can persuade other people, that will dramatically depend how the vote goes at the end. So after the five minutes up, all players get to vote as a three, two, one, and they point to the player that they think is a werewolf. Of course, this werewolf, he was quick to say that this player was a werewolf and they did a terrible job at defending. So two players point at this card. That's the most fi fingers that are pointed at one card. So they are eliminated. They get eliminated and the werewolves win because one village is dead and both werewolves weren't discovered. In a case of five players, if one player points in the middle, two players point here and two players point here, both the players die. So of course in this case, if this card dies and this card dies, one of the werewolves is dead. 
So of course one of the werewolves dead. One of the villagers has died, but the villager can still win if at least one werewolf dies. So the villagers win. And that is the game. So of course you can change it up. Um, you can have different roles. You can have a lot more players. You can buy expansions. Um, the base game allowing three to ten players. I think with all the expansions, I think it's close to 67, 68 players. So it's a great party game. And it's fairly straightforward to pick up once you get hang of the bluffing mechanics. So if you've liked this video, remember to leave a like, subscribe. If you are subscribed, hit the bell to get notified of our upcoming videos. And keep up to date on our Facebook and Twitter pages for more upcomings and going on to the gaming world. And hopefully we'll have a playthrough of this video fairly soon. As promised guys, we're going to go through the roles of each card. Uh, this is in the order as written in the raw rules. Um, as said before, we recommend the app as it makes things a lot simpler. So the doppelganger is the first card and they wake up for all the other uh, roles in the game. Um, the doppelganger can look at one other player's card but doesn't switch it. And depending on what card they pick up, they then perform that action. So if they're the villager, tanner or hunter, they are now that role and don't make any actions. But if they are the tanner, they have to be voted to die by the villagers. If they're the werewolf or mason, the doppelganger wakes up with the other werewolves or masons when they are called. Um, they are then on the werewolf team if they view a werewolf. And if they're on a pick up a mason, then they are on the village team. If they're a seer, rubber, troublemaker or drunk, they immediately do that action. And do not wake up again when the original role is called. So at the end of the doppelganger phase, if the announcer tells the doppelganger to close her eyes, unless she's a minion, in which case um, she performs a minion action and looks around to identify where the werewolves are who are sticking their thumbs up. They're then on the werewolf team. If the doppelganger is the insomniac, uh, after the insomniac closes her eyes, the doppelganger insomniac is woken up to check her card to see if she is still a doppelganger player. So just after the insomniac goes. If a player receives a doppelganger card during the night, they are the role of the doppelganger originally viewed. The doppelganger script at the night is a little different than most, um, and therefore they have to be told to look for werewolves if they're the minion, and also is woken up later at night if the insomniac is present. So the next one is the werewolf. Um, so werewolves wake up, and they look for the other werewolf in the game, unless they are only the single werewolf in the game, in which case they're allowed to look at one of the centre cards. So the minion uh, follows the werewolf. And during this phase, um, everyone's got their eyes closed, the werewolves put their thumbs up, and the minion looks to identify the werewolves. So the minion knows where the two werewolves are, and the werewolves do not know who the minion is. Then the mason goes. Um, so the mason... So when everyone's closed their eyes again, the mason opens their eyes and they look for the other mason in play. So there's always two masons in play and they are on the village team. Then the seer goes. So the seer opens their eyes and may quietly look at one other player's card or any two of the cards in the centre. Uh, as it's may, they do not have to do this action. But they can if they want to. Then the rubber goes. So at night, the rubber may choose to rub a card from another player, and he plays his rubber card where the other card was. So he switch them. But the rubber looks at his new card only. And the player who receives the rubber card is also on the village team. The rubber is on a team of card he takes, but he doesn't have to do the action in his new role. So of course, if he makes no action, then he's also on a village team. Then a troublemaker goes. So a troublemaker wakes up. They may exchange cards between two other players. But they're not allowed to look at either card. The troublemaker is on the village team. The next role is the drunk. The drunk is so drunk he doesn't remember his role. <laughs> so when it comes time to wake up at night, he must exchange his drunk card for any card in the center. But he doesn't look at it. The drunk is now the new role in front of him, even though he doesn't really know. 
and he's on the corresponding team. So then the insomniac goes. Uh, the insomniac wakes up and looks at the current card. They're in that role in that card. Um, if they are still the insomniac card at the end of the night, they're still on the village team. So then you have the no wake rolls, which are the villager, the tanner, and hunter. They don't wake up during the night phase. Um, the tanner, his whole goal, he hates his job so much he wants to be voted to die. So if the tanner gets voted to die and a werewolf also dies, the village team wins. If the tanner dies and no werewolves die, then the tanner win and the werewolves do not win. Then there's one final role, which is the hunter. Um, he has no night action, but if the hunter dies, the player he is pointing at dies as well, regardless of how many votes his target receives. So effectively, if you kill the hunter and he's pointing at a werewolf, even though all other players have pointed at the hunter, then the village team still wins because one of the werewolves is dead. So they're the roles. I highly recommend using the app uh, to make playthrough a lot simpler. And hope you enjoyed.